Good evening, today we're going to be taking a look at Pingai OS 10.10. .10. Now the creator of Ping iOS approached me back when they released the version 10.04. If I hadn't mentioned, this is actually an Ubuntu based distro, so it was based on Ubuntu 10.04. Time got tight, I didn't have the opportunity to review it, but now that they've released version 10.10, .10, I'm going to follow through on it, go ahead and give it my, my first look and initial impressions. I've actually been running this on my laptop for the better part of a week at this point. And, you know, I, I've got mixed opinions on it. I'm going to ask your opinion eventually. So let's just go ahead and walk through some of the changes, some of the updates, and things like that. If you're not familiar with this, like I said before, it's based on Ubuntu 10.10. .10, and according to a lot of the sites that I've read, it is Ubuntu after a week of customizations. Now, I can say that to be pretty close to true, but not necessarily a week with my customizations. They are a week with someone's customizations. So if you like what has been done to it, that's awesome. Uh, this is not necessarily my cup of tea. I can't really say that it is for me. But basically, let's just take a quick look at the interface. We'll see what's different from the default Ubuntu install, what's changed, what's added, what's taken away. Now, of course, you're going to notice the top and bottom panel not quite what you'd expect out of a default Ubuntu. Instead of the bottom panel, you've got a side panel and a bottom panel. This is not reacting properly. For some reason, the VirtualBox drivers did not want to install the, the 3D acceleration like they were supposed to. It works fine on a normal install on a laptop, so don't be concerned about that. But across the bottom, you've got Docky. On the side, you've got Docky, of course. The side Docky actually has the places, so you can see all of your different GNOME-based places. Across the bottom, this is just your commonly used applications. You can add or remove apps, whatever you want to do with it. And it has the Docky configuration on it. Note, this is separate from the GNOME Do that is installed by default, but you can use them both interchangeably. It doesn't really matter, whatever you want. You'll notice it also comes with Conky pre-installed, pre-configured to give a load of system information to you at a glance. That's pretty handy. Now one thing I do find pretty interesting about all this is in the upper left hand corner we've got the menu, but instead of the default GNOME menu you'd expect, it's the Linux Mint menu. Which, you know, that's, that's a little bit of a step in a different direction, but it's interesting to see that. And not only that, it is of course the Mint 10 menu. So if I started to search for something like GTK Record My Desktop, you see there it shows up, look up this, install this package. These are all items that showed up in Mint 10. However, after doing some searching on the Pingai OS forums, it seems that Mint Menu Search actually uses the Pingai search engine. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Pingai, if you are watching this video, feel free to elaborate in the comments below. I apologize for not finding more about it before doing the, uh, the review. But in addition to the Mint Menu, you'll notice we've got the Global Menu applet added here. GNOME applet Global Menu, so that is pretty handy. And you'll notice if I have different items running, like this Firefox browser, the drop-down actually shows you all the things that are running, and you can select things very easily. And while we're looking at it, the version of Firefox that comes pre-installed is Firefox 3.6.12, but it does appear to have a different theme, a different layout on it. There are a load of things pre-installed there, so that's pretty interesting. Lots and lots of add-ons, I must say. Lots and lots of add-ons. More add-ons than I think I've ever used before. And you'll notice there the background change. That's actually the item I was going to talk about next. Uh, this item right here, it's called the WeBuilder, WebBuilder applet. It goes out and searches the web and finds different photos for you. If I go into the preferences, you'll see here we've got things from Flickr. We've got things from web shots if you want them. And you can pull things from local collections if you wanted to use those as well. And what it does, it sets to rotate your wallpaper every 5 minutes and downloads the new photos every 24 hours. So for example, if I right click on it and say next photo, it's going to go out to the next one that is available locally and whatever ones have been pulled down from Flickr. So a lot of them are going to be Ping iOS based, a lot of them are Flickr based. And you'll notice here, this transparent background on Conkey does end up updating. It has a bit of a delay, even on a locally installed system like a laptop. I used this for a few days, like I said, and I did notice that that was taking just a couple of extra seconds to change. Not a big deal though. Moving right along though, you'll see a lot of other common things, things you've seen before, like the GNOME Do Launcher. I love having that pre-installed and loading by default. The Granola app is actually installed. If we go in to open that, you'll see what you're saving yearly. I did notice some failures when starting up and when shutting down. I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not, but Granola was specifically what was failing, so this may not actually be working correctly. 
We've also got the Linux Mint updater, so that's pretty handy. If I go ahead and start Mint update, it goes out, connects to all the repos. That's one thing that I should probably mention at this point. Ping iOS appears to be sort of a mesh between Ubuntu and Mint, and just sort of a, a round robin. Whatever you want from different distros, you don't necessarily have to give, pick or take from one or the other. But as far as the default interface, that's pretty much all there is to it. Then you need to look at what apps come pre-installed, because that's really where Ping iOS has a lot of other distros beat. If you come in here, you see the All menu. Look how long that scroll bar is. Yes, that's a lot of stuff that comes pre-installed. You probably couldn't see even a quarter of that just because it went through kind of fast. But there's just so much stuff in here. If I go into the accessories, there are things that I've never even used. You see here we've got All Tray, Dock Any Application to the Notification Area. That's pretty handy. You've got Cover Chooser and Cover Glubus, very handy if you're playing music. I don't do a lot of that personally. We've got Glubus Preview, allows you to see your files in a blink without having to specifically open an app, just use the Glubus Preview. We've got Gnome Do and Granola, like I mentioned, the Notify OSD configuration. I haven't looked at that, let's see what it looks like. There we go, bubbles, text, all the different things. You can change the way that it looks under games. You've got the Play on Linux stuff, that's very nice. Under graphics, we've got a lot of stuff pre-installed. However, no GIMP, that's a little odd, but I guess the, uh, the creator did not necessarily care for GIMP. There are quite a few things there, and you can install GIMP if you want it. Under internet, we've got a lot of stuff there. Deluge for BitTorrent, you've got the Dropbox client pre-installed, Frostwire, the LimeWire alternative, or the GNUtella alternative, excuse me. You've got Gwibber, you've got PMS Linux. I noticed there were some issues trying to update PMS Linux on my system when I was running it. I don't have a PS3 though, so I'm not terribly concerned. They've removed the Vinegar remote desktop client, replaced it with Remina. I used it very briefly. It seems to work pretty well. I don't have any complaints. Got Skype pre-installed, Java pre-installed, Ted the Torrent episode downloader. Not sure about the legality there, but use at your discretion. And XChat. Lovely to have an IRC client by default. I know Mint does that as well. Under Office, we've got OpenOffice, just what you'd expect. Sound and Video, another menu filled with things. We've got DVD by default. We've got Digital TV Control Things. If you have a Digital TV Tuner, that's awesome. Gnome M Player, just like Mint has, I believe. The iPod Manager, very handy for people with iPods. Like we mentioned before, the LXBD Player. I think I mentioned it before, maybe not. I've done this review a couple of times now. I had some issues earlier, never mind me. Uh, MVPod allows you to convert videos for the iPod, very handy. OpenShot as the video editor. PMS Linux again, I guess just because it's UPnP, it is both sound and video and internet, sort of. And a couple of other common things. Okay, system tools now. We've got a couple of things here. We've got Ubuntu Tweak and Alurius. These are both kind of the same thing. Gnome Tweaker, Ubuntu Tweaker, yeah, they both do the same thing, but they both do it in different ways, I guess. Bleachbit instead of Computer Janitor. Deja Dupe in case you want to back up your files, very handy. VirtualBox pre-installed, very interesting to have that. And a few uh, various and sundry other things, Unet Bootin, they've removed the USB creator from this, so it's nice to have something that you can create USB with, and Wine Game. And to finish things up, let's look at the what would be the system menu. We've got the administration menu, lots of stuff in there. Boot Up Manager, that's always handy. If you've not used Boot Up Manager, give it a try. There we go, it's going to load the data for what actually starts on Boot Up. Very useful. Uh, it shows you everything that can run, everything that does run very useful. Startup Manager is actually what I was thinking of, but that's just as useful. Gparted, very nice to have. A firewall configuration tool, very handy. And other than that, just a lot of the other same common stuff. If I am overlooking something, do feel free to let me know in the comments below, though. We've got the Compass Config Settings info, we've got the Cover Thumbnailer, and that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, the Windows applications, I think we mentioned earlier, in case we didn't, and I'm not sure if we did. Wine preferences, this is actually Vineyard. This is a way to manage all of your wine settings in one place. You've got the, what operating system. You don't have to use wine config anymore, basically. And you can go through and set everything in here. You can install new apps, kind of like using wine tricks, and do all these little tool type things. Basically just makes working with wine a little bit easier, a little bit more integrated. But basically that is a very quick first look, first impressions of Ping iOS. Like I said, I've been using it on my laptop for the better part of a week now. 
it's not necessarily for me. Docky, I'm not a huge fan of. I, I like having this small panel at the bottom that I can just throw everything into and keep everything out of the way. If you like this look and feel, or you like something similar to it, if you like the applications that come pre-installed, this may be for you. It's a bit of a large download, I believe it was 1.4 or 1.5 gigabytes to download, so take that as you will. But basically, it's a very impressive take on the Ubuntu distro, so if you like this, by all means give it a shot. I will have links to where you can download it in the source code below, so do ahead and take a look at that. As always though, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.